Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaras, and welcome to Root, a turn-based, strategical, originally board game of adventure and war in which generally four players battle for control of a vast wilderness. Root is a game I've been absolutely obsessed with over the past while, ever since I was uh, shown the game by a friend in real life. It is, as I said, a board game, but it does have a digital adaptation. The original board game was created by Leader Games, and the digital adaptation was created by Dire Wolf Digital and is available on Steam and mobile. Um, so for those of you used to my Wesnoth content, do not worry. That will continue. Um, but this is a game I have really, really enjoyed playing, and I would like to share my passion for the game with others on my YouTube channel. So I am going to be starting a new series devoted to Root. Now, Root is very different from other games I have played. Uh, as, since it's a board game at its core, um, it is a multiplayer game. It is not uh, generally a game you would play single player. There are options to play it single player against kind of uh, very rule-based AI that you could you could play even the board game version single player against. But uh, it is the most fun and is at its best, in my opinion, when it is played multiplayer. So a lot of my root content will actually be multiplayer content. Now, it won't be in voice. It'll just be against other players that have played the game for quite a while and are very, very good root players. But yeah, this game is about woodland creatures fighting for dominance over the forest. It's a very cute game. There's a whole ton of factions that are fighting for control of the wilderness, such as a faction of cats, of birds, moles, crows, otters, just so many different factions. It's so replayable. It's got a lot of, um, just a lot of charm, a lot of depth, and it's, it's just very unique. I have never been this captured by a board game before. So before I start uh, getting into any of the content that I've been kind of dreaming of creating, um, I think it would be a disservice for those that are new to Root uh, to start by hopping into that kind of content. And I think what's really needed is a run through of the tutorial. So I would like to teach anyone who is new to Root how to play the game, and that will be vastly helped on by the tutorial that Direwolf Digital has included in the Steam adaptation of the game. Um, it is a board game. I own, well, my family owns the board game. Um, I didn't personally buy it. So in theory, I could teach it on the board game, but this is a lot more streamlined. It's going to be a lot easier to teach. And this is just the way I think would be the easiest to get the basics across to my audience. So whether you're uh, someone who has uh, been with my channel for a while or whether you're someone who is completely new and this is the first video you've seen, welcome. I hope you guys enjoy Root, and let's hop right into it. Welcome to Root, a game of warfare and adventure where four unique factions struggle for control over the vast woodlands. I will note that four unique factions was true for the original version of the game, but since expansions have come out to the main board game and to... Uh, the Steam adaptation, four factions, is a little on the low side, but we're not going to touch on that too much for now. In this scenario, you will be playing as the ambitious Marquis de Cat. Long before they became the military and industrial powerhouse they are today, the Marquis came to the forest with a small band of warriors in a few modest buildings. I hear the flapping of wings in the distance. Move quickly to establish your hold on the forest before your feathery foes, the Eerie, arrive. So, move a warrior into a neighboring clearing to expand your rule. I'm going to touch on just a few things real quick here. Um, Root is a game played on a board that contains generally 12 clearings. On some fan-made boards, you'll see more than that, but we don't worry about that for now. 12 clearings, and between clearings you will see paths. There are rivers as well, which are not going to be important for us for now. And then between kind of these paths and clearings are forests. You'll also notice each clearing has a little icon, which will be touched on in just a moment uh, by the game itself. So those are just some important initial steps. So right now it's telling us we have a warrior. We've got some cats. We've got three cats. 
We have some buildings we can see. Um, looks like a sawmill and some sort of like recruitment station, recruitment drive. Um, but yeah, it's telling us, let's click on the boot. So we click on the boot. We're going to click on a warrior and we're going to move them to a neighboring clearing. It wants us to move warriors here. And you can see we can do this because there's a path kind of connecting the clearings. Um, so we move a warrior over. And now each clearing has a suit representing the community of creatures living there. Mouse, fox, and rabbit. So fo fox suit, rabbit suit, mouse suit. Excellent. Because you have more pieces in that clearing than any enemy, you rule it. You can see we have a little rule flag as it's pointing out here. So this fox clearing is ruled by the Marquis de Cat, which is us. You can see in the bottom left here. So, good to know. When you use the march action, as we just did, you get to make two moves. Make another move now. And this is this is really teaching us, while it's teaching us the basics of Root, it's teaching us about the Marquis de Cat, a very unique faction within Root, because this whole you get to make two moves is specific to the Marquis de Cat and is not something you see with the other factions. And it is, in fact, a balancing element to make the cat's movement action less punishing for them. So we're going to move one of our other cats over here. And just as kind of defending our building. So let's end our turn of rest. We have a big day of building ahead. So we're going to click our end turn button here on the bottom right. And now, because there's no other factions on the board, it's my turn again. So our sawmills generate one wood at the start of our turn. Wood is used to create buildings. See, we have our wood supply down here. Um... And again, this is something very specific to the Marquis de Cat. They are the only faction that have these kind of buildings, this whole recruitment and sawmills and stuff. Like these buildings are specific to this faction. Let's build a recruiter to get more warriors into the forest. Select the build button. So we click the build button. We're now going to come over here and be like, okay, so we rule this fox clearing, which means we can build in it. So we're going to build, and we're going to build a recruiter for one wood and get one victory point. The way Root works is whoever gets to 30 victory points first wins the game. And we are going to get one victory point, so we're on our way. Now, in the tutorial, it's not going to make us get to 50, or 30, but that's just a good note to be aware of. You can see it's given us the recruit action. We can place a warrior at each of our recruiter buildings, again, specific to the marquee. You can see we, our recruit cats just came out of the little recruitment building next to the recruiter and now we're going to spread out our warriors to rule more clearings so let's move maybe a warrior up here and take our second move and move a warrior over here so you can see now we're expanding our rule ruling five clearings our goal has been completed as i feared an eerie warrior has seized a nearby clearing they aren't friendly to outsiders so when you actually play the game you know you don't have warriors just popping up in the middle of nowhere but again for the purposes of the tutorial um, it doesn't matter. After three actions, the day is finished for the mighty, mighty Marquis, and that's teaching us the Marquis uh, get three actions per turn. Um, so, as you can see here, on the bottom left, I can click on my little cat here, and it brings up an info panel telling us about some unique aspects of the faction. It's showing us what things we can build. We can hover over them, see what they do, how many victory points we get for building them, the wood cost, other stuff like that. Um, and then the second tab at the top actually gives us how you play their turn. Um, bird song, place one wood at each sawmill. Uh, daylight, and then the game works in a three-phase cycle. So every person on their turn will have three phases of their turn. Bird song, daylight, and evening. Birdsong, we place one wood at each sawmill. Daylight, we can craft and then take up to three of the following actions um, in any in any amount and in any order. Um, so we could do three battles. We could do two marches and a build. We could do a recruit, or a build, recruit, and a battle. Uh, any order and any number of each. Um, and then, well, up to the three anyways. And then in evening, we just draw a card, plus one card for each blah, blah, blah then discard down to five. Um, and this, again, this order is pretty unique to the Marquis de Cat. You don't see elements of this other than really the drawing a card. You don't see the other elements with other factions. Like you do see stuff like moving and battling, but not in this way. So march your warriors into the clearing occupied by the Eerie to challenge them and then defeat all Eerie warriors. So we really need, we have three actions here. It says actions remaining. 
we're going to start off by recruiting. Because we're going to need some extra forces to come fight the Eerie. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move one warrior from up here. We're going to come over here. And then we're going to move two warriors. Oh, it's not going to allow us to move two. Because it's the tutorial, unfortunately, it's not going to allow us to remove two. So, or to move two at a time. When you actually play the game, and you'll see this probably as we get further, um, you get to choose how many warriors you bring from each location. It's not always just one. So we're going to click the battle action. We're going to fight the Eerie. We're going into a fight. And here we go. In battle, two dice are rolled with side 0 to 3 to determine hits. The attacker has the advantage. They take the higher die, leaving the defender with the lower one. There are a few cases in which this does not happen, in which the defender gets the higher die, but those are for very specific factions. Each player can deal no more hits than the number of warriors they have in the clearing of battle. There are, again, a few exceptions to this rule that we don't need to worry about right now. We rolled a 2-0, but we only have one warrior, so you can see here the one is highlighted for us, telling us we could only deal in one hit because we only had one warrior. For each hit, an enemy piece is removed from the map, starting with warriors. Your total hits are added up and displayed below. And now we're out. The Eerie Warrior has been defeated. But now, a roost has emerged. The Eerie have built a roost that can recruit more of their warriors. You must attack and destroy it before their flock becomes too strong. So now they're going to have their turn. They're going to recruit. They're going to move. Are they going to fight us? They're going to fight us. Ooh, a 1-2. Now, the hits happen at the same time. So both warriors will kind of collide into each other, and they'll both die. So there they go. They've now been removed from the map. So we're going to just you know, Hail Mary for it here. We're going to move over to here and move over to here and fight the Roost. Now, the Roost, as you can see, is defenseless. It has no warriors. It's just a building that they have. So we actually get an extra hit because it is defenseless. Even though we have one warrior, we actually dealt two hits. Well done. You've destroyed their roost. The forest is ours for now. And that is the very first part of the tutorial. Tutorial complete, and we're not really counting victory points. So those are the very, very basics, and we're going to now go into, for this episode, the second part, the Long War of the Forest. The invading Marquita Cat wishes to exploit the woodland using its vast resources to fuel her economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing buildings in the woodland. In a typical game, the first player to score 30 wins. This scenario, let's see if you can get to 12. When you start a game as the Marquita Cat, you place your keep in one of the corner clearings. So let's take a look. And we say, okay, interesting rabbit clearing down here, um, mouse clearing here. And you can see there's these, these building slots, actually, where we can build buildings that I'm sure it'll tell us about in just a second. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to start up here. So we need to hit continue first. The keep is the cornerstone of your kingdom. Enemies may not build or place pieces in the clearing with your keep, but they can move there. Again, this is unique to the marquee. Now this tutorial is teaching us all about the marquee. So this mechanic of a keep, no other faction is a keep. Place your keep now. Okay, it's going to force us to place it here. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh well. It's a tutorial. The marquee army greatly outnumbers the other factions. You start with a warrior in every clearing, except the one in the corner opposite of your keep. That clearing is Eerie territory. Now, I will state this is in the original version of the board game and the digital game, but there is a, as more factions got introduced into the game, um, Leader Games released what is called Advanced Setup, which completely changes how setup works for each faction. We're not actually in a turn right now. We are in the middle of setup and they completely changed how setup works for each faction. So it's like Marquis could place their keep anywhere on the map, for example, and there's no like rule about not having a warrior in the next corner and stuff like that. But we don't need to worry about that for now. I just wanted to make that clear uh, for if you end up playing the board game or um, or anything like that, that you you know that this is not generally how it's done anymore. 
but that clearing is eerie territory. So we have a warrior in every clearing. This is part of our setup. Now we must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. So I'm going to place a... Uh, well, I guess it'll it'll tell us which one we're placing first. Oh, okay. It's just going to choose for us. All right. So we have a recruiter in Bunny. The Eerie started here. The Eerie has swooped in and built a roost in the empty clearing. It's quite well defended. They have six warriors, which is quite a lot. All right. So start of our turn. At the start of daylight, you have an opportunity to craft cards from your hand using Workshop. So this is, again, specific to the Marquee. You may review the text of the cards in your hand by holding your mouse over them. Review Arms Trader now. So the cost to craft a card is shown on the wooden board beneath below its suit. So I mentioned earlier there is a wild bird suit, which you only really see on cards. Um... It is not seen in any of the clearings, but cards can be bird suit and is a wild suited card. Now, this, as you can see, it has a crafting cost of two fox. What this means is for the cats, I need to have two workshops in fox clearings to be able to craft this. And when I craft it, I get the sword item and two victory points, which we don't need to worry about the sword item for now. It doesn't do anything for us, but for other factions, it may do something. Each workshop contributes its clearing's suit towards paying crafting cost. For example, you could craft this arm shirt if you had two workshops in fox clearings, as I mentioned. You can craft Smuggler's Trail since you have a workshop in a mouse clearing and it costs one mouse. So look at that. And you'll notice uh, this, again, your, the suit of the card is different than its cr the suit of the crafting cost. So it is a bunny card but it has a mouse crafting cost. Now, for every faction, there's the idea of crafting pieces, which is what is required to craft a mouse. I need one mouse crafting piece. And specifically for the marquee, those crafting pieces are the workshops that they have uh, on the board. For other factions, it is very different. So we're going to click and drag it up, and we're going to craft it. Smuggler's Trail. We have gone ahead and crafted that. We have gotten a bag and one victory point. Crafting the Smuggler's Trail rewarded you with a victory point. You are on your way to your 12 victory point goal. You can see it showed us victory point in the bottom left. After crafting, the Marquis can take three actions. The Marquis also scores victory points when building, which is what you see on your player board when you click it here. And you'll see that for every faction. Like You'll, you'll see how they score victory points. So build. You can only place buildings in clearings you rule with available building slots. So it's showing us the building slots here in yellow. And we rule it because we've got the orange flag. We have more pieces than any other um, faction in this clearing. We are, the workshop allows you to craft cards in your hand. Sawmills produce wood to help you build more buildings. Recruiters, as you know, help you recruit warriors. Let's build a recruiter to bolster our defenses. So we're going to build a recruiter. Here we go. No, now that there are two recruiter buildings, you can recruit two warriors with a single recruit action because we recruit whenever we recruit, it recruits a cat at all recruiter buildings. There's a cat, and there's another cat. All right, move your warriors to the front lines to defend against the Eerie. Now, normally in in an actual game. Um, you wouldn't do stuff like this, but it's just for the purpose of the tutorial. Like you wouldn't waste time throwing warriors right into the Eerie at the very early stages of a cat game. It's just not efficient and it really leaves you your buildings poorly defended. So now it's gonna say you may now move any number of warriors using one march action. Let's move two. So we cause right, because we leave this building undefended. It's not quite ideal. Remember, when you choose to march, you may make two moves. Use the second move to keep closing in on the Eerie. Move both warriors. To move, you must rule either the clearing you are moving from or moving to. This can make it tricky to move deep into enemy territory without a substantial army, and this is very important. I must rule either of these. Both, one, or the other, if I'm going to move. If I do not rule either of them, I cannot move between them. There are very specific situations in which this rule is ignored. 
but that is not a concern for now. During evening, you draw one card, as we saw on the player board earlier. You can draw additional cards by having more recruiters on the map. And you see that here. When I have three recruiters, one, two, three, there's a little card icon. And if I go to the... I can't click on it right, right now. Oh, it's telling us to go here. Look at that. Let's review the phases of our turn. Awesome. So you can see here, draw one card. Plus one for each little uh, card earned on the recruiter track, and then discard down to five. So we drew our one card. The Marquis de Cat is an upstart. The lineage of the Eerie Dynasties will surely retake the forest. So they are recruiting and they're going to battle. Interesting. The Eerie are assigning actions to their decree. Each faction has unique capabilities in their own way of taking actions. The Eerie may not look like much yet, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn so long as their leader stays in power. So he's recruiting, he's moving. They found the weak link in our defense. Prepare to fight. So they're fighting us. 2-1, they take the higher roll. And we lose a warrior. But so do they. We had a knife. And they have now built a roost. And they, the Eerie get victory points for having roosts on the board we may have lost the fight but as long as your keep still stands we can heal fallen warriors with field hospitals again another unique part of the marquis de cat discard a card that matches the suit of the clearing where your warriors were defeated to return them to your keep so we were defeated in a mouse clearing so we can discard a mouse card to return the warrior to our keep look at that excellent this is what can make the cats very resilient to aggression. You can review special abilities unique to your faction like field hospitals by tapping on your avatar. As you can see, field hospitals right here. Whenever a warrior dies, you may spend a matching card to return them to the keep. And then we have the thing for the keep as well that they mentioned earlier. Don't retaliate just yet. Build two more buildings to keep gaining victory points. So no cards to craft. So now we're going to build. Um, let's build a let's build a sawmill we only have one wood at the moment so we want to get some more wood on the board get another victory point excellent you could use more wood for building let's use overwork to push a sawmill to produce more wood so to to use overwork you must discard a card matching the suit of one of your sawmills clearings to gain wood cards in the bird suit act as wild and can be used in place of any other suit so we're not going to be we don't have two fox workshops we don't even have one so there's no chance we're crafting this um so we're going to go ahead and spend that now one thing i should note and it'll probably tell us about this but the marquee uh can can spend a bird card to get an extra action so generally you don't want to actually overwork with a bird card because that could have been an extra action but because of where they put our buildings because i was thinking i was actually going to place a sawmill in this bunny clearing because i had a bunny card that i would overwork to produce wood here and then i would have my bird cards around for extra actions if i needed them so because we used a bird card we can overwork any clearing with a sawmill in it so we're going to overwork this one why not produce an extra wood excellent you may have enough wood to make another building you may spend any wood on the map connected to the clearing you wish to build in so long as they are connected by clearings you rule so if i want to build here i need to rule the supply line between the wood i am using to build and this clearing so if erie for example owned like all three if they ruled this clearing up here this bunny if they ruled this bunny and this mouse clearing there would be no way for me to build here because I don't rule any, I don't rule the path between my wood and the place I want to build it at, build the building at. But thankfully I do. All like I have a supply line between all of these areas. You'll notice I can't actually build here because there's no extra building slots, which are denoted by the squares. So if there's no building slots, I can't build as well. I'm going to build a second building. Uh, unfortunately, we can only build a workshop right now. So we're going to place a workshop in um i already have one in mouse i'll 
Let's all create one in Bunny, why not? We built our workshop, two victory points, excellent. Tap your avatar for more building info. As you build more of a particular building type, its cost increases along with the victory points it earns you. So you can see how much wood it costs to build the next workshop, Sawmill and Recruiter, but the, you can see the victory points also go up. And you'll actually notice the tracks of victory points are not the same. Workshops, the second one is worth two, and it only costs one wood to build. For sawmills, the second one is one, and same with recruiters. And you also notice for recruiters, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, whereas sawmills are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then workshops is 0, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those are balancing. Th that's for balance. You are out of actions. By discarding a bird card, you can take an extra action, as I mentioned earlier. So there we go. Looks like you haven't recruited yet this turn. Let's do so with your final action. So we hawks for hired is what that's called. And there we go. And we drew an ambush. This is a very important card. So more warriors arrive each day. The Eerie will use them to crush your pitiful forces. So the Eerie are going to march into this um, fox clearing. Um, and the Eerie's leader just got deposed. They have entered turmoil. So that's a bit of a problem for them. Um, but we don't we don't really know what that means at the moment because we have not played the Eerie. We haven't done the Eerie the Eerie tutorial. Continue scoring points to defeat the Eerie by destroying roosts, constructing buildings, and crafting items that award victory points. So there are a lot of birds here. So I could kind of choose to fight them, but really I'm just thinking the play is to just rush um, is to just rush up victory points. So I'm going to build another recruiter. I'm going to take a recruit action. And I, I, I want to defend my uh, recruiter buildings a bit better. So we're going to do that. And actually, we're going to even that out a little bit more. So we're going to move um, probably one here with our march action and then move two more over to here because our buildings are a little too undefended and the Eerie are just going to walk in and smack me probably. So we got a boot, we got a tax collector card. Move decree. So Eerie are recruiting some units, they're moving, and they're going to fight me. Now I have an ambush card. There are five ambush cards in the deck of cards, and the, the deck has 54 cards. Um, there is a fox ambush, a mouse ambush, a bunny ambush, and two bird ambushes. Um, the way ambushes work is, as it says here, at the start of battle, defender may play to deal two immediate hits. Cancel if the attacker plays a matching ambush. So I have an ambush, so I could play this to ambush him and kill two warriors before the fight even starts. And if all his warriors die before the fight starts, then the fight doesn't happen. Um, so that this is an ambush can be a good way to kind of um, give yourself a little bit of extra protection and maybe surprise someone who was expecting to be able to have an easy battle and maybe take out some of your buildings. And you actually, unbeknownst to them, have more defenses for those buildings than they might think. Now here it's just one warrior against one cat. Like, I don't really care if this cat dies. He's not defending any buildings. My buildings aren't in threat. So there's no need to ambush him here. So he's just going to kill my warrior. Oh, well. I might have a card to field haunt. Do I have a... I do have a fox card. So I'm going to use field hospitals. Using this fox card here to return a warrior to my keep. Now, you'll notice... Um, there's a lot of actually different types of cards in the deck. There are actually two decks in Root. There is the main deck, the standard deck, and then there's the Exiles and Partisans deck, which is the much more widely used version of the deck because it's a lot more balanced. It was created, it's a lot more balanced and a lot more interesting, and it was created after a bunch of Root expansions had come out, and it was clear that uh, the original deck had some shortfalls. So, um, like this card is one specific to the standard deck, which is actually one of the most interesting cards in the standard deck, which is once in daylight, I may remove one of your warriors to draw a card. But you can see the crafting cost is very steep. I need one bunny crafting piece, one fox, and one mouse, of which I only have a bunny and a mouse right now. 
Um, I could make a fox one actually. Maybe, maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll do. I've I've never actually because I don't really play with this deck very often. I haven't actually um, created one of these before. Uh, created the or crafted the tax collector card before. So I am going to discard a card. I could have crafted that boot, but oh well. I'm going to re resurrect the warrior. I'm not too concerned about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a workshop. So that next turn, the Eerie crafts in their in their um, uh, daylight, right? And at, at the start of their daylight. So at the time I build the workshop, I can't craft anything because my crafting phase is already passed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recruit. So you have nine victory points, getting close here. There we go. And now I can't have infinite warriors on the map. You'll actually see here warriors in reserve. If a war if a player has no more warriors in reserve, they may not recruit warriors. So there's only four cats left that I can actually have on the map. So I'm going to move two warriors here, and I'm going to defend this workshop because I would like to craft this card. That would be kind of cool. Now, crafting is interesting because there are... Um, crafted there are crafted items like we crafted a bag early on there was the boot i discarded and there are um crafted improvements as well now i don't need to fight the ambush this because he's only one warrior like he's just no way he's getting through all my cats he can only deal one hit he rolled a three zero but he only you know he only can kill one cat because there's only one warrior so there's crafted items and there's also crafted improvements. A crafted item just gets crafted. You get the item. You can see I have a crafted item here as I crafted the bag. And then um, the card actually gets put into the discard pile, which we can see if we click up here and click discard pile, we can see all the cards that have been discarded. Um, <clears throat> but a crafted improvement actually gets um, put next to your board. And you'll, you'll see that in here if i go not in there uh bottom left i click on my avatar crafted cards have their own spot on in the game um when you play in real life it normally just goes like next to your board but um the crafted card lives there in the crafted card section and you get to kind of choose what to do with it and then there's like one-time crafts that do something immediately like this favor of the rabbits remove all enemy pieces and rabbit clearings this is actually i think one of the reasons why the original like, one, one of the big reasons why people don't like the standard deck is because stuff like this is insanely unbalanced but it, and extremely strong. So it was kind of like, really, someone could just do that and wipe out all pieces and all rabbit clearings? That seems kind of ridiculous, you know? So I'm going to get rid of my fox ambush. I really don't need it right now. I'm going to craft what I want to craft. Our sawmills produce wood and birdsong, and now I'm going to craft tax collector. So we were able to craft it because we had one workshop in each suit. And now, once in daylight, you may remove one of your warriors to draw a card. So I'm going to remove maybe one of the five I have here. Draw an additional card. Look at that. We just got a bird card on our turn, which is fantastic because now um, we have an extra action to spend. So no cards to craft. So we're going to start by overworking with a bunny. We're just going to get extra, extra wood, and we're just going to craft to the finish or to build to the finish line here. Um, I'm going to get a sawmill, two wood, and now how much would we have one wood left? Um, we could have actually, let's, let's undo that. We could have actually just built a, a fourth recruiter for the three wood we had um, to just get our 12 victory points. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Let's build it up here. Why not? Let's build a recruiter. There we go. Three victory points, and we are at 12. So there we go. That is an introduction to Root and the Marquis de Cap. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, thank you for joining me on my first episode of Root content. I'm planning on producing many more. I'm going to go through the tutorials first, probably do two at a time. Um, we're not going to do clockwork because that's like playing against AI. But I'm going to do I'm going to do a few at a time. Get everyone kind of situated with the game, and then I'm going to start. Um, I'm already starting to record games that I've been playing with, um, with some very competent players, uh, friends of mine on a uh, discord server that I'm in. So, um, stay tuned for those. Um, and those, I'm, I'm very excited to produce some of those and, 
I, I hope you guys will enjoy it. So yeah, that is Root. Um, prepare to see more of this game in the near future. So for now, I would like to thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.